uh, you know, we've been looking at different aspects of uh, preaching and uh, um, and one of the things, uh, you know, about the preacher, right, we, that is what we've been uh, focusing on. We will be preaching the, the messenger who carries the message. And uh, we've been looking at uh, how should one prepare, you know, now that, um, you know, I'm in this uh, dispensation, New Testament, um, uh, dispensation, New Testament church. So how should I, you know, uh, prepare and how should I, uh, you know, train myself uh, in order to be, in order to communicate the message. So we've been looking at uh, several aspects. We looked at some of the, you know, some of the practical things last, uh, uh, in the last session, right? And uh, I've also been enjoying all the, you know, things that you've been posting in the stream about, uh, you know, the, how the gospel reached. And uh, so let's keep that going, you know, if you can share, uh, if you can research about your place and share, that will be great. So, yeah. So we've been looking at that. So one of the things is, uh, you know, for us as um, as communicators, uh, as uh, when it comes to preaching, that we uh, be able to receive, that we be able to hear, that we um, keep ourselves in that place where we can hear clearly the voice of the master, the voice of the shepherd, right? So. Um, I know that you know we of course we can get knowledge and understanding when we when we when we read through the you know the written scriptures when we go through the logos and uh, but it's very critical important for us to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit to hear the the you know the uh, and to receive the the guidance the leading the prompting of the uh, of God and and that is uh, you know key to the ministry uh of uh, of preaching right that is very very uh, important critical so um so the, we will do that we will do everything to keep that you know to keep that clear right and uh, and uh, which means that uh, like see in the natural like we have uh, you know several things that impair our hearing right we, we Maybe there's something physical that's in the ear that's that you know unable, because of which we are unable to hear. You know, some earplug, or you know, or we are or we are listening to something so loud that we are unable to hear another person speaking. And uh, so, uh, in similar ways, right? So also spiritually, uh, when it comes to hearing the voice of the Spirit, uh, voice of God, you know, we could be doing things uh, or maybe not doing certain things that that hinder. The voice of the spirit uh, that we are not able to receive, right? It could be living in sin or living in open sin or rebellion, or maybe there is, uh, you know, the 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 posture of our heart, you know, like saying, okay, I I know everything, and uh, and um, probably we know a lot of things, and you know, maybe not posturing ourselves to be, uh, you know, to be humble before him. And so, we, you know, when we uh, reach a place of uh, that kind of a thing, then. Um, we put a lid right to receive things from God. So, so this morning, as we pray, um, you know, let's just pray and ask God to remove everything that is blocking, you know, anything that seems to hinder, um, uh, and that, uh, you know, uh, I'm just reminded of this verse, right? Hebrews chapter three, um, Hebrews three, and um, yeah, um, verse. Verses 12, 13, you know, uh, yeah, particularly verse 13, Hebrews 3, 13, by exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Okay, so sin is deceitful. Uh, it means it tries to cheat and deceive us, um, but it also, you know, makes us hardened, right? Uh, and when we are hard, we're not pliable, we're not tender. Uh, to the things of God and and to the voice of God. So let's uh, let's just pray and and say, Lord, um, just recommit myself to to hear you clearly, God. I just want to place a value uh, on your voice, and uh, I know that it is life itself, and uh, so I just want to esteem it higher than anything else. And if there's anything that I'm doing or not doing that is causing this, you know, this barrier, uh, let it be taken off. Right, so I just want you to just go ahead and pray, and maybe you can pray out and pray out in the spirit, pray out in tongues, because um, uh, um, uh, you know, Scripture says that sometimes we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with uh, with groanings. Right, um, so um, 
Let's pray. Uh, let's ask the Lord. Okay. So let's just ask him to remove every stumbling block, remove every barrier that we might have placed because he, his desire is to speak right, uh, and to speak to us. But sometimes we block it. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Father God, I pray that there be a removal of things, Father God. Um, things that are blocking, things that are hindering, um, God, uh, maybe some things that, um, that are causing us to hear partially, uh, hear faintly. Lord, I pray, God, we want to hear the voice of the shepherd. Lord, in our spirit, of oh Father God, you've created us to hear the voice of the shepherd. Lord, you created us to receive revelation in the inner man. You created us, Lord, in our spirit, Lord, to, to, uh, to be sensitive to the promptings of the spirit, Lord, to see things visually, O oh God, and to receive it, O oh God, to receive interpretation, God, and uh, to receive the mysteries uh, of, uh, of the kingdom, God, in our spirit, Lord. And so we just open up our lives, Lord, and we, and we just humble ourselves before you, Master. God, that you would speak, that we would listen, God. Speak to us God, as only you can. And I pray for removal of all barriers today. Um, I just pray for a removal of uh, the barrier of esteeming oneself lower and saying, I, everyone hears, everyone understands, but I'm not able to. I just pray for a removal of that mindset in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, you've called us, Lord, to hear us of your word and doers of your word. And you've given us the privilege to hear the voice of the shepherd. My people, Lord, you said, my sheep, they know me, they hear my voice and obey me. And so, God, we, we thank you. We thank you for that. And maybe if we've done things, you know, willfully or maybe unknowingly, um, we can just say, Lord, I, I come back. I come back to you. And uh, um, Lord, let there be a cleansing, Lord. I confess. Uh, let there be a cleansing so that I can and hear you. I can, I can feel your heartbeat, God. Uh, the way you see things, I want to see it, Lord. Let your thoughts be my thoughts, O God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for this privilege, God. Thank you for this privilege, Lord. You're calling us your co-workers, co-laborers, Father God. Thank you. Thank you for this privilege. And thank you for this uh, awesome, uh, Lord, responsibility that you entrusted each of us with this stewardship that you entrusted with with and thank you for all the resources lord that you are lord they're bringing our way and committing lord the riches of the kingdom the riches of the knowledge of christ lord um, and we thank you that we carry this treasure or in this world earthen vessel of father god in this container but we carry this lord heavenly treasure we thank you thank you lord Thank you, Father God. Thank you for clarity. And thank you, Lord. I just pray and commit, Lord, I just pray and release, Father God, that each one of us, oh, Father God, that there will be a, yeah, a, there will be a multiplication of ways in which you speak, oh, Father, that we will just um, uh, discern, Father God, the weight against uh, uh, your word, Father, the scriptures, Father, and uh, we'll have the joy of walking in it, Father God. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We give you all the praise at this time. We thank you for unstopping our ears, God. And um, thank you for, Lord, I thank you that you will also warn us even before we get into such an attitude or, you know, get into such an action, considering such things, God, that you will, Lord, you will warn us, God, and give us a check in our spirit, Lord. We thank you. We give you all the praise at this time. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's uh, amen. Praise God. So that's one of the things, right, that we are called to, you know, receive, hear, see, um, you know, in our spirit, right? Just as the Father, as the Lord heard and saw and did, uh, and uh, and and we are called to walk in His way. So, uh, it's our privilege, it's our responsibility, but also that we will be watchful um, to, uh, you know, to 
avoid things to do not to you know undertake anything that will that will prevent that right um yeah okay hmm. right so let's look at um where we uh where we stop last class we, uh, you know we were we were looking at second corinthians chapter three right we were looking at second corinthians chapter three and uh, where uh, paul writes about uh, uh, the new covenant and how it's uh, how it's more glorious and how we are uh, you know in those 12 verses uh, we see that uh, he writes about uh, the privilege that we have as new testament uh, ministers and what we have been interested what we have been given and so on so um, let's just uh, you know look at those verses um, again right so second so, um, corinthians 3 and verse verse 1 do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you uh, verse 2 you are our epistle written in our hearts known and read by all men okay so so he's saying that um, to the Corinthian church you know if you look at the people uh, uh, these are the people who uh, were saying I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, and there was a lot of division. You know, they were there was a lot of, um, you know, uh, uh, things even that um, uh, that they were against Paul. You know, they were doubting his apostleship, and um, you know, they were they were saying things like, you know, this man his letters are weighty, but in his presence and speech, uh, it's not very impressive. Um, okay, page number we're looking at uh, page number twenty one in our notes. Okay, mm, page twenty-one. Right. So, um, okay. So this is, uh, you know, this is that that that's the kind of audience. Okay, and and to them he writes that you are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. So, uh, so the thing is that uh, uh, this this bunch of people, this group of people, uh, irrespective of what they said, they were in Paul's heart, right? Uh, which means he treasured them. He uh, uh, he uh, he wanted them to know uh, the gospel, of course, and that's why uh, he spent time there about eighteen months or so and shared the gospel and planted the church and so on. But, but the fact is that the the, the deeper things of uh, uh, the uh, the deeper truth of scripture, he taught them taught them about the spirit, about the gifts of the spirit, about faith, and uh, and also sh you know shared his uh, his life with them. So they were in his heart. Uh, and in other words, we say we can say that uh, the Lord had given him a burden for these people. So, uh, so are people written in our hearts? That's some. That's a question, you know. Or if we are called to, um, you know, in a, in a formal manner, you know, share in a particular setting, you know, can we ask the Lord to write, um, you know, people in our hearts, you know, write this audience in our hearts? And in, in other words, saying, Lord, you, you know what their needs are, and uh, you know what their concerns are, and I and I just want to, you know, carry that burden, what the burden that you have, I want to carry it even as I convey this message. Right? I don't don't want to make it about me or to you know show them that i know some things but but really lord you know uh, put them in in my heart right um uh, verse 3 talks about how um, paul says you know you are an epistle of christ uh, ministered by us but written with ink of the holy spirit you know written not with ink but by the spirit of the living god so uh, in other words he's saying that uh, you know god is the one who writes in your hearts god is the one who does that deep work in your spirit right he acknowledged that he knew that he knew that uh, about his own limitations that he was there as a minister as a servant as a as a channel as an instrument of god but um, you know despite his uh, Preaching and demonstrating, um, I mean, ministering and so on. It was God who was writing. It was the Holy Spirit who was uh, touching their hearts and writing upon their hearts. Right. So He acknowledged that, and uh, it's good that we acknowledge that as well as a new and and at the same time being assured of it that God, you are writing, that you're doing it. Uh, it's it's not about it's not about me. I, I will, you know, I, I will position myself to listen to you i will prepare myself to prepare my heart to uh, to receive from you to hear from you and also to sh uh, you know do those things and then share it right uh, and I'll, I'll do it in the best way possible god but i know that you are the one who writes 
you're the one who does the work of transformation. You're the one who writes on people's hearts, right? To have that, uh, that will keep us in a place of humility, uh, that will keep us in a place of dependency uh, on God and, uh, and, and also free us up. No unnecessary pressure on ourselves, right? Uh, this is a message. If he gives me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm preparing, I'm sharing, and I'm, I'm praying, I'm waiting on him. Uh, I will go and share. Uh, I'll do it to the best of my ability. And in the season where I'm in, the maturity that I've, I'm in, I'm not trying to overreach or, you know, uh, I'm, I'm doing it, right? The, the way he has, uh, uh, what he has given me and where he has placed me, I'm doing it, right? Um, verses four and five. Okay, and we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. So uh, our sufficiency, meaning uh, our capabilities, um, whatever we, we need, it comes from God. Uh, he makes us, uh, he's the one who makes us sufficient. Our sufficiency is from him. The, the ability, the willingness, and everything comes from him. The resources, the empowerment, everything comes from him. So he says, our sufficiency is from God. Again, acknowledging that uh, keeps us humble. Acknowledging that keeps us dependent on him. And it's you realize that in the bigger scheme of things, that it is God who does it, right? It's it's always been about him. But sometimes what happens is that uh, it can be so subtle that you know we uh, we sometimes might think, oh, maybe you know I'm being used by God. And it's a subtle thing, right, to say uh, I'm being used by God, and or to say, look at me. How wonderfully I'm used by God, you know. Um, the focus shifts, right? It's a very subtle. It's a very thin line, right? Uh, so, you know, as a person who's communicating the truth, uh, to say that God, my sufficiency, my ability comes from you, right? I, I know, I acknowledge, you know, like what, what we've been studying on Sundays, right? Acknowledging every good thing uh, that that's from Him. Who we have, who we are made, and what we have become in Christ—that's that's a very important thing to acknowledge, right? And not be in a place of uh, false humility, right? To acknowledge the good things um, that we have received in Christ. And um, Philemon verse six: that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So we're not debasing ourselves, right? We are. Uh, true humility is looking at ourselves the way God looks at us. Uh, true humility is uh, is not saying um, when God says, you know, you are seated with me in the heavenly places. True humility is not saying, Lord, I'm a worm. I'm just groveling in the dirt. That's not true humility. Right? Humility is agreeing with God. True humility is saying, yes, Lord, you know, this is what you have made me. And it's not arrogance. It's not presumption, but really uh, us being in a place of humility, right? So uh, acknowledging every good thing and 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 saying, God, my sufficiency is you. Uh, you're the one who, uh, gave, yeah, Charles, you have something to share? Um, yeah, um, I'm just asking about that point of humility and the uh, our sufficiency from God as in a, Chapter five, uh, verse four and five, and I'm um, yeah. inquiring about uh, even in First John, where uh, uh, John says uh, the the Bible says that as he is, so we are, and mm. the and now we we connect, we we see that our sufficiency is not from ourselves, it is from God, but as he is, so we are. So now that so he we. is. Yes. So, so now that he's a spirit, uh, are we now that we are seated in the heaven, the places with him, and so he, so he is, so we are now. How how do we correlate the three now? Uh, are we are we really spirits? Are we are we not able to see things like that? Just shed mm. some light. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
yeah the spiritual reality is that uh, you know as he is in the sense that uh, you know we are born again we are connected to him we are one spirit with him uh, we are seated with him that's the spiritual reality but we do have this flesh uh, and we do walk and interact and uh, you know deal with things on the earth and uh, we do have to deal with the flesh right uh, but the but the reality spiritual reality is that you know we are connected with him we are one spirit with him so the life of god flows in us right we have the wisdom we have access to the wisdom of god we have access to the i mean we have the holy spirit power the same power that um brought up christ from the dead you know the holy spirit power works in us so these are all wonderful uh, realities and uh, and things that have to do with our identity and even you know what we possess right so we acknowledge that okay so true humility is acknowledging that and uh, walking in that and not coming to a place of arrogance so arrogance happens when we either look down you know when we compare ourselves to others when we look down on others um, because maybe they don't have this understanding or you know we uh, we we look at ourselves in isolation and not as being connected with the lord right uh, it is because of him so our sufficiency you know when you look at that with our sufficiency is from him it's flowing from him you know this is what he has made us to be and it's not uh, not in any way contradict the fact that we need him right? our sufficiency is from him he makes us sufficient as we get the uh, the rema from him we see him do things in in scenarios and then we do it right so it doesn't contradict in any way um uh these two you now these aspects of the truth what he has made us to be who we have become and we are dependent uh, on him i hope that helps charles if it does thank you so much pastor yeah okay so um so yeah so uh, ability everything comes from him right and then um so verse 6 uh, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life okay so this uh holy spirit life giving spirit uh he he has made us ministers of this new covenant okay so we go with this message and we go with uh we speak life the life of god uh we bring the life of god into uh, scenarios we bring the hope of god into uh you know lifeless situations hopeless situations uh um, both with the words the, the message and with the demonstration with the power of the holy spirit so we become ministers of the spirit of god the life giving spirit of god right so um so uh, when we look at this verse we see that yes um we we walk in demonstration right demonstration of uh, of the word we walk in um demonstration meaning that we invite people to have an encounter with uh with the power of god we have an encounter with the character of god to have an encounter with the power of god so that's a new testament minister so we don't limit ourselves to just um you know uh, share a few in- or share a truth but we in- we invite people to go beyond that even expand that and say hey i want you to experience the power of god i want you to experience the love of god i want you to experience you know he, uh, who he is go, go ahead call on his name invite him into that particular need that you might have experience the power uh, of uh, of god right um so uh, we are ministers of uh, the life giving spirit okay verses 7 and 11 talk about how the ministry is more glorious than what we have seen in the new co- uh, in the old covenant you know we see that uh, and and the example uh, uh, he gives is verse 11 uh, moses who put a veil you know he had an encounter with god he put a veil because that glory was fading away of course uh, people couldn't uh, people uh, saw that it was bright and shining this face but um, he put a veil because it was also a f- glory that was fading right whereas now we we see that um, 
it is much more glorious. It's, it, it is much, uh, you know, what is passing away was glorious, verse 11. What remains is much more glorious um, in several ways. Like it is much more glorious. So uh, understand that. Okay. Uh, it, is, it is okay to be wowed by um, what we see, whatever what we have seen God do right through Scripture in the Old Testament, through the Old Testament saints. Uh, but here we see that it is much more glorious. We are living in a new dispensation and time. So to expect God to move uh, in, in amazing ways, right? To, um, so that is, that is something. Uh, to reveal who he is um, and uh, uh, to, to, to really uh, open up people's lives to encounter this greater manifestation of God, uh, of his power, of his love, of, a, uh, of the gifts, of the move of the spirit, and so on, right? Uh, so we are living in such times. And uh, verse 12 says, therefore, you know, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Okay, so we minister this boldness and courage because we have so much hope. We are brimming with hope. We are overflowing with hope. You know, because we worship this God who is a God of all hope. And uh, and this is who he has made us to be. And this is what we are and he, what we have called to do. Therefore, you know, we use great boldness of speech. Okay, um, so that's what uh, uh, Paul writes in this. And it's it's good for us to internalize this um, and and uh, and walk in it, really. You know, and come to that place of walking in it. And because what happens is when we... Uh, when we uh, internalize this truth and we say, okay, every time you see the gospel and you see the Lord do things, amazing things, and uh, when we put ourselves in that place, you know, we, when we begin to put ourselves in that place and say, God, you know, you did it and uh, you're, you've, uh, you've given me your Holy Spirit and, uh, and you're, you're saying that, you know, I can do those things. Right. Not for my glory, not so that I can, you know, uh, uh, you know, draw my identity identity from it, but but really so that your kingdom advances and your, you know, your um, uh, works uh, advance and the works of the enemy are dismantled in people's lives and so on. You rule and reign, right? So, so we we begin to think in that manner. If you're not, you know, thinking all it, we begin to, you know, we begin to walk into situations, not overwhelmed or intimidated. Right? We 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 look at needs, and we're not overwhelmed or intimidated. And even in you know in the in the most dire of circumstances and in, in people's lives, in messed up people's lives, we see that glimmer of hope because this is what God can do if only that person will open the door. Right. So, uh, so we begin to, you know, we begin to press forward, and we we say, okay, this is what God can do, uh, and so that changes the way we way we minister. Right, it changes the way we we face these circumstances. We walk into environments. It changes the way we do things. Right. So, as a New Testament minister, right, this is what. Uh, God has made us. This is who we are, and uh, and this is what we can do. Okay. Um, okay. Um, one more uh, scripture. One, uh, one Corinthians fourteen and verse six. Okay. So one Corinthians fourteen and verse six talks about uh, the different objectives um, of uh, of sharing the word or you know communicating the truth. Um, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 6, but uh, it's actually in the context of, of course, we've studied this before. It's in the context of uh, you know, a person praying in tongues and he's talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, praying in tongues or speaking in tongues, giving a message in tongues in public. Okay. Um, so he's, uh, he's actually talking about that. He's, he's Comparing, you know, if I give a message in tongues and there's no interpretation, uh, then it's not really helping uh, the audience, right? He's, so he's sharing about that, but it, uh, and as he uh, shares about that, he's um, you know exp uh, expounding a truth about uh, uh, coming and sharing a message and the aspects of it, different aspects of it. Okay, it could be to do this, it could be to do this, it could be to do this. So, so let's read that. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues 
what shall I profit you unless I speak to you? Okay, so he's saying, okay, unless I bring a message and I speak to you, and he and he, he writes about four things. Okay, so the first one is revelation. Okay, unless I speak to you either by revelation. So revelation, we know, is uh, you know, unveiling or disclosing or uncovering things that are hidden. Okay. Um, things that are hidden. So uh, first of all, I, I get a revelation and uh, and then I share that revelation. Hey, did you, you know, have you have you seen this? You know, uh, this is what is uh, this is what is there in scripture. This is the promise or this is the treasure. Have you seen this? Have you considered this? Okay. Um, you know, for me, uh, I, I you know recall this whole revelation of sozo. You know, the word that we uh, studied, right? Sozo, salvation. Now that was a, a revelation for me for a long time. Salvation was was the ticket to heaven, right? It was something. Yeah, I'm born again. I'm enjoy, I'm having all this peace and joy, but it is for uh, you know for something in the future. Okay, um, so uh, forgiveness was the big aspect of it uh, for me. Hundred percent, it was it was just forgiveness, right? That was it, uh, and it's it is it is a big part of it. But the other things, the other aspects of deliverance, healing, right, and um, and prosperity and uh, peace and and all that, uh, it was not something that I had considered, I had not even considered. So, so a revelation. So when someone shared that. And uh, he studied that. It was like I was so excited I couldn't sleep that night. Wow, there's so much. You know, I'm born again. You know, I, I began to look at born again as uh, and being born again as something something so exciting. I'd never seen it that way, right? So it became like, wow, what a great deal! I'm a believer. You know, all these words came back to life with new meaning. Right? I'm a believer. I'm born again. I'm a disciple of the Lord, and you know these are things that that the Lord accomplished on the cross, and these are things that He's bringing into my life, right? And and this is why it's the good news. So it's just changed completely, changed right? the way I looked at the cross, the way I looked at uh, being born again, the way, the way I looked at salvation, right? So revelation. Now that is what. Revelation does. Right? Revelation brings conviction, and conviction changes our daily action, and therefore changes our lifestyle and our destiny. Right. So that's what revelation does. So, so Paul is saying, you know, uh, how will it, you know, if I just spoke in tongues, if I give a gave a message in tongues, um, well. How will it profit you? How will it benefit you? So, which means when I come with the revelation, it is benefit. You know, it is something that is beneficial, something something that is changing, something that is convicting, something that is, you know, uh, reordering my life so that my action changes and my lifestyle changes, my speech changes, everything, my perspective changes, and my destiny changes. Um, so he's saying this is uh, by revelation. So that's the first. So when we communicate, we can bring the revelation. Okay, we're not trying to manufacture something, but really, what what God speaks to us, uh, it's it's you know something something that is very very simple can be life changing. Um, I uh, remember. Reading about this person, I think Tal Brook. I think I'm not. Uh, I, I might be getting the wrong. Uh, I mean, I might be getting the name wrong. Tal Brook, who uh, wrote about, um, you know, he, he he was a person who was into New Age, who came to India, uh, who met with all the, you know, some of the uh, Sai Baba was alive then. You know, the Puttapati Sai Baba. He, he spent time in his commune. He was. Uh, he also spent time with uh, Rajneesh. I think was alive then in Pune. So he spent time with all these. Uh, you know, it was New Age and uh, you know so-called gurus and and uh, well, he experienced the power of that. You know, like 
astral projection and transcendental meditation and uh, and all those psychedelic colors and music and everything he, he experienced that and became a teacher right he used to travel and a sought after person teacher uh, both in the us and uh, elsewhere in the you know teaching people about meditation and uh, you know impartation of uh, of the powers of that and so on so he was that but you know he heard the simple message of the gospel while going in a car traveling in a car and listening to the message on a radio car radio i just tuned into uh, a station and heard the gospel um, uh, he, i don't know whether he heard it before but then he heard it and he was just struck by the simplicity of it that uh, you know because he was used to all these complex things right uh, all these complex mysteries and everything that that comes as shrouded as knowledge he was used to all these things that he heard the simplicity of the gospel and that was a that was an eye opener that was a revelation and his life changed you know he just dropped it he just dropped everything and became a a a, a minister of the gospel and he writes that book exposing you know uh, all the like the so called god men and uh, women and and he writes about the power the power of darkness energizing the, the demons powers energizing some of the experiences and all that and teachings and so on so um uh, so he writes about that right so but the thing is that you know he uh, accepted the lord and it was simple and it was revelatory right so the thing is a, a revelation when we bring a revelation uh, it not need not be uh, you know something major something very complex something connecting that it need not be but can be something very simple right uh, uh, but it it's life changing it's something that has been hidden that's revealed that makes a big difference okay so uh, it's beneficial it's profitable when we share a revelation right and it can be and it it, it is uh, the 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 things that god has taught you he has showed he has shown you and uh, so it it makes sense to you know make a note of that and not let go of that right uh, you look back in your life what are the things that god taught me and how did he teach me you know how did he uh, you know for some it could be uh, you know it could be in different ways like you know science made sense and and this is what it is and you go deeper into it and you know in at all you're able to convey that you know this is what it is um and and so on so revelation right life changing and uh, we share that okay so the second thing we see is um, knowledge okay so he says um uh, he who prophesies uh, sorry uh, yeah what shall i profit you unless i speak to you either by revelation by knowledge okay so the greek word uses gnosis you know starting with the g g n o s i s gnosis meaning um it's information but it's uh, it's spiritual information okay spiritual information and um, it's knowledge that uh, the holy spirit brings to you and it's knowledge that you you know you you read through and the holy spirit highlights it and you and you receive it and and uh it is it is information right it is knowledge it is information um and it's it's something that's constructive that brings uh benefit to you okay, so it's something that uh, switches on the light right it uh, uh, hey i didn't know that i was ignorant and now this knowledge has brought light um there is scripture which talks about i forget the reference the entrance of your word brings light okay so that's what god's word does the entrance of his word brings light okay uh, enlightenment comes from the word of god the knowledge of his word right and paul writes about how we are called to increase in the knowledge increase in the grace increase in the knowledge of uh, of the lord Right, of the word of god so we we bring revelation we bring knowledge um in our in our speaking in our preaching um the third one it says is prophesying okay uh, prophesying so inspired speaking or forth telling propheteia right means that you know, speak forth inspired um by the holy spirit 
you're inspired speaking you're speaking forth uh, the words of god also we know you know we've we've studied in 1 corinthians 14 again that uh, he who prophesies brings edification exhortation and comfort psalm 119 130 thank you the entrance of your word brings light thanks sam uh wonderful scripture isn't it um it's like it's like a torch light you know it's like uh, you know you i know we've been in places where it's so dark and uh, it brings light you know there's such a relief when there's light and uh, the word of god does that right okay it dispels darkness and uh, we are coming back to prophecy so uh, 1 corinthians 14 talks about how it brings edification exhortation and comfort edification exhortation and comfort so speaking a inspired word a word that's inspired by the holy spirit right so you hear the importance of hearing the importance of receiving um in our spirit spirit sense right like we how we studied you know the natural sense physical sense and we and God has given us that spirit sense to receive revelation. Paul says, uh, when the Son chose to, when God chose to reveal uh, His Son in me, right? He's talking about in the inner man that there's a revelation that's received, right? So we receive and we speak forth. Our prophecy, you know, can be an act also. It can be a prophetic act. So we either speak forth, we either pray forth, you know, sing forth. But here, of course, we are talking about speaking forth. Uh, inspired speaking um, so that brings benefit like edification the person is spiritually built up right uh, edification exhortation they are encouraged they encouraged you know nothing else the encouragement is you know the encouragement is sometimes you know like it seems unreasonable it's like you know the situation has not changed but I'm encouraged here comes the word. It's not like I have not, you know, heard that before. But you know, here comes this prophetic, timely uh, word, and I'm encouraged. I'm exhorted. I'm encouraged. You know, I'm liberated now. I'm singing. Right? Everything has changed. Um, the situation is the same. The challenge seems to be the same. But I'm exhorted. I'm encouraged. Okay. So exhortation, edification and comfort okay that's the other thing that uh, the comfort um, of uh, the holy spirit the comfort that the holy spirit brings through his words you know especially you know sometimes when like people are grieving like uh, people have lost their loved ones and they are grieving uh, in a season of bereavement um, uh, of course we can we can ask god to, to be there and be there as the comforter because human reasoning, human words uh, doesn't seem to cut it, you know, doesn't seem to make sense to the person who's experiencing that intense grief. Um, and uh, it's the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And a prophetic word does that. It brings profit to the, uh, to the hearer comfort despite intense grief despite the season of bereavement and um, you know i you all, you know right beginning of the year uh, uh, my father passed away you know january 3rd he passed away and uh, so um so when um but the lord you know kind of comforted me and strengthened me to be of comfort to be of strength to the rest of the family and so on but i knew that um, my mother uh, like I've never seen my mother and father apart, you know, in the sense, uh, very few times I can just count it on one hand, you know, uh, you know maybe probably half a hand, half the fingers. Um, they, they've been apart. They were always together. Both of them were doctors. Both of them served together. Uh, my mom was a gynecologist. Dad, an orthopedic surgeon who, take, who took care of the, you know, administrative side of things and the hospital. So all of them together in the kitchen. You know, my dad will be maybe probably cutting some vegetables mom will be cooking or she'll be cooking something he'll be washing drying stuff so you know always a lot of chatter uh, arguments but you know together any public event they'll go together any so i knew that like it was going to be difficult uh, for my mom to receive uh, you know comfort no matter what you people would say no matter even my presence you know uh, so 
So, so I was just praying, God, you comfort her, Lord. I know the comfort that you bring will be will be strong, will be powerful. So she was completely broken. The first few, uh, you know, I used to go from here almost uh, every time I had a you know, day off. I just drive down uh, six hours away, uh, six, seven hours away. Just go spend time, just be there, just listen uh, and, and come. So one such visit, she was different. She looked different and I was glad. So she said she had a dream. You know, she had a dream. And in that dream, um, she saw, I mean, it was a particular scenario, like a lot of people dying and or, uh, you know, suffering and so on. And uh, at the end of it, she heard, you know, God, uh, the Lord, you know, uh, she has these dreams. So it was the way that God would speak. So she was, um, and God spoke something to her and comforted her and said, you know, I did not want your husband to go through this. And I know that he was suffering. I, so she was completely completely you know relieved it's not that the pain was not there she definitely missed him you know but that that intensity of it the way it was when i had seen that seemed to be not there right and i was glad uh, i was so glad you know so god comforted it was a it was a dream um so you know i'm just saying that it um you know when it's a when we say it's a prophetic dream, you know, like God, God giving something to bring forth edification, exhortation, and comfort, a prophetic dream, comforting her. A prophetic dream can be foretelling, of course, you know, something about the future. This is what I will do. Uh, like the, the Pharaoh and Joseph interpreted that, and, you know, it can be that also. But, but the thing, this dream, I, I call it prophetic because it it brought the fruit of prophecy right edification exhortation comfort the last part of it um so amazing comfort no human words no reasoning could have done but comfort so when we speak the reason i'm saying is you know there's great benefit when we as as a mouthpiece of god as spokesperson of god we you know we bring forth the comfort of god in words that he gives us or things that he describes to us we convey that and there's great comfort and the lord does that the spirit of god does that he's the one who writes like we saw earlier second corinthians 3 but, uh, but that is brought in right uh, and uh, lastly uh, i'm sorry just we are uh, uh, teaching right expounding explaining uh, educating right teaching grounding complex things made simple you know we like how been, we've been studying about the ministry of the pastor evangelist evangelist pastor teacher right? that's the ministry he's the teacher the holy spirit is the teacher and he gives us and when we bring that right line upon line of course there's great help you know there's great benefit in inspiration motivation uh, in preaching right and also there's great benefit in uh, when we teach, right? it's line upon line. It's like certain things being unlocked, certain locks being removed. And it's like, you know, I, the way I see it, you know, certain puzzles, pieces is coming in place. You know, you have a jigsaw puzzle and if you worked on it, you know, there's great, uh, you, know, you look at the final thing, oh, wow, it's, it's nice. Great contentment and uh, the picture is formed. You see the full picture. Right? That's what teaching does. That's what teaching does, anointed teaching does, that line upon line, precept upon precept. Now you know the workings of it. It's not just, hey, I need to live by faith, and but you know what, you know, what brings faith, and you know what takes away faith, and you know how to live in faith, you know, from A to Z, right? From the beginning to the end. So, and everything in between, right? So that's what teaching does. So when we, as communicators, when we bring in this, there's great benefit to the hearer. So that's what Paul is, you know, teaching in 1 Corinthians 14, 6. Okay, I think that's all we have time for. So uh, uh, thank you guys. Have a great weekend. God bless you. Uh, and uh, we'll meet again next week. Okay, God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. And that's what I'm saying. You know, like, what is that I can make my delivery? Yeah, okay.